is my hair short? Alex, that piece of ah! Man, that damn chair shot's giving me a headache. I've been having so many weird dreams as of late, it makes me feel like I'm all over the place. If there was only a game that could encapsulate what I'm going through right now. Alright, let's see what we have here. Oh, the original Stanley Parable on PC. Hell yeah, one of my favorite games ever. But no, that's too obvious. Hmm. Ah, oh, Nightmare on Elm Street? Well, things aren't really that bad. It could be worse. What about Out of This World? Not yet. But soon. Gee, there's gotta be one game that shows where my head's at. Let's check the Sega CD library. Let's see, we've got some FMV. Oh, 32X, get out of here. Let's see, uh, Sonic CD, oh, that's a good game. Uh, oh, Starblade. Oh, Rotorash, I don't have a rash in my ass. Got milk. the Sega CD. It's the early to mid-90s. The 16-bit console war is starting to heat up, with Nintendo's Super NES going bit for bit against Sega's Genesis, the latter of which already having a head start in the war, trashing the original NES whenever they could, and having the games and characters that had the attitude 90s kids were looking for. And the Sega kids were going to have more to brag about when the Sega CD brought games on compact discs to the mainstream. Though not the first CD add-on for a 16-bit system, as that honor went to NEC's TurboGrafx, it was the first to popularize the format, thanks in part to having some great and cheesy games. By 1994, the add-on was slowing down in popularity, but more games were still coming out for it, one of them being today's game. Panic. This game was released in 1994 to what I would describe as general confusion from the critical masses, and it'll be easy to see why once you see this game for yourself. It isn't one of those games that's easy to describe, nor is it a game most people talk about, though it is a very simple game with an all-around weird premise. You know how every system is bound to have one weird-ass game that tops all the others? Well, that's what Panic is on the Sega CD. That's probably why this game doesn't get much love, as it's one that's kind of tough to discuss because it's in a genre all its own. But I'm going to do my best to categorize the chaos when we take a better look at Panic. If that doesn't set the tone, then I don't know what will. The game begins with an opening cutscene that tells you pretty much everything and nothing at the same time. I mean, what would you make out of a moving television vomiting and a person sent flying out of a telephone booth? You ever seen the movie Caligula? It's pretty fucked up, don't look it up. 
After that, you'll get a set of typewriting text that tells you the proper plot of the game. All machines have begun to malfunction because of a computer virus, including Moai heads. That took ingenuity, so it counts, dum-dum. A new program called Panic has been developed to eradicate the virus, and that's where we start off. Now before you go asking yourself, Why does it hurt when I pee? Just wait, it only gets better. For whatever reason, this little boy gets sucked into his TV by way of the Genesis. The old saying stands true. Genesis sucks you right into the game. Looks like we have to deliver the cure to the computer virus spreading like butter on legs. And you want to know how we do such a task? Easy, by pushing buttons. I'm not joking. This is the face of seriousness. Hey, Brian. Brian, look at me. Dick. That's literally all that you do. I cannot explain this any further because that's all there is to explain. All you do is push random buttons in the given place you're at and it could be anywhere on anything like a hallway with a bunch of red buttons, a spacesuit room with grimy looking buttons, or a toilet in a blue cube with only a few buttons. Okay, this is too much to take all at once. Let's pause the action right here for a minute. minute. That'll date the fuck out of this video if that ever gets updated. Most of the buttons you press will only show off a gag which again revolve around the place you're in in one way, shape, or form. So you may feast your eyes on batshit crazy stuff like this. Or this. Or this? Really? What, what's happening? No. There's absolutely no telling the kind of things you'll see. But not everything a child like Slap, that's the kid's name by the way, should go through. This is a T-rated game, so expect to see some interesting things to say the least. Some of this you may experience with your dog Stick. You get it? Slap Stick? Like Three Stooges? <laughs> However, that doesn't mean you should press any button all willy-nilly as you might initially think, as some buttons end up adding some gameplay to this game. A select few buttons in some areas may connect to a booby trap. If you so happen to press one, accidentally or otherwise, you may see something like this. Boy, I hope the Twin Towers aren't booby-trapped. They're not a monument. Well, they are now, but... Well, close enough. I initially thought all these booby traps were connected to special buildings, but I learned that isn't always the case, and why would it be me? As some are connected to normal, everyday things like an igloo or a jumbo jet. Jesus Christ. So you do have to proceed with a little bit of caution, but you won't know what a button will do until you press it. Again, the easiest and less stressful gameplay style in the world. This is a story about a guy named Brian the Blue. Brian the Blue played video games for his YouTube channel, 
a channel called Jacobians. Jacobian synopsis was quite... No one narrates my parable. You can view your progress by hitting the start button, where you can see what level you're on on this circuit board full of blue chips. Ah, uh, no wonder this shit ain't working. Anything that's blue will screw everything up. You remember blue waffles? Fuck. You can also see the amount of scenes, gags, and remaining monuments along with more information that I don't exactly know its meaning, but if you want to be a completionist or go for a no destroyed monument run, the option is there which is good for me, because I can push these buttons all day. I'm going to push another one right now. Oh god, I'm all the way back here. No! As you go along, things are obviously going to get stranger. Like, I didn't think we'd get a free-roaming slap touching and spawning in more hippie paste tubes, or you might be in familiar stages with only stick. That's more like it. My turn to push some. I should say there are at least two buttons that can take you elsewhere in this cyber system. Oh, you know what this reminds me of? Cyber. We kill this virus with some. One button will for sure lead you to the next level, while another could lead you to another section of the level you're currently on, or heck, the game may throw you a button in there that takes you back a level or more. I know from experience that the game will try to trick you at a couple points if you so happen to find yourself farther, and I remember getting stuck at this 2001 monolith a lot, cause there's a whole level dedicated to just sections of that. I'm positive of it. And if you think you've breezed through a level on your first try, don't worry. You'll find yourself back there begrudgingly or not begrudgingly cause you want to see those gags. But remember that the pause button can be your friend on that front. Oh, never seen this game before. Wonder what data yeast is cooking up. Another way to get a game over is by making a path to one of the skeletal chips. Doing so will pop you out of the TV and in front of your puppet looking family and they'll kick slap, stick, and us off of our signal and thus the mission is a fail. That's just like a typical family that doesn't understand your hobbies. Little do they know you're trying to save the world. Brian, will you quit your daydreaming? I can't hear Wheel of Fortune over all your hollering. Oh, and when you're done, I got Racco to play tonight for game night. Oh dear. Oh god. The Lord is really testing me today. You'll have to start back from the beginning, but that's no big complaint, as you can discover more rooms that you hadn't seen the first time around. There's a lot to like about this game, it's constant rotation of themes with every area you find yourself in, it's way varied sense of humor, and the simplicity of not just the gameplay, but also its sound effects. Most of it you can tell was just made by some guy with enough time to put a microphone against his mouth and make amateur sounds like a child getting into content creating. <laughs> Another thing I like is the random cameos from all sorts of random characters, and even the mega CD bio screen. Guess they were too lazy to Americanize it. Let's see what this button does. Ooh, poor slap. Okay, what about this button? Oh, lucky slap? 
You'll more than likely find one when there's a lot of buttons to press, and there's a couple of reoccurring figures like an angel or the devil. They're better to see than the Taj Mahal exploding, but here's one of my favorite scenes of this ilk. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Thomas Edison, inventor and father of the electric light bulb. Junior, do your stuff. Hey, what do you mean, fanned? You need an eye exam, ump? There's no better bat in the majors! Bro, I don't know what's going on. I just want some fucking Funyuns. Though they may be another gag, they might be connected in some form. I mean, in some rooms you can recall them to some of the cameo gags. So is there a connection to all of the madness you see? Oh, hell no. Though I do appreciate the occasional graphical boost. You know how some weird games actually show the graphical capabilities of a system better than your usual heavy hitters? We don't need no launch titles like Mario 64 or Wii Sports. Let's just lock all the best devs in a room for a year and see what they come up with. I'm kind of getting off track, so let's get back on the train. Here's a room I haven't seen before, and it's got so many buttons. Holy crap, man, that has to be a record. A typewriter with every letter in the alphabet. That's 26 buttons, and we can have fun with this. B T B. Or how about B R I A N? If you find a safe path to the end, then you'll encounter the source behind the virus, and it's something straight out of a sci-fi film of the 90s. I mean, look at that. It all comes down to the correct press of a button, and all the rest just send you into a pipe system. When you do find the right switch, you'll have successfully cured the virus with some colorful circuits and a kicking orchestra backing you up as you have accomplished your mission to the approval of this golden idol. All machines will return to normal, to an extent, and the whole cast of characters will come take a bow as the credits roll. And I mean the whole cast, as there is quite an ensemble. But that is how you play this game, if you want to call it that anyway. Certainly not something you see every day, and I trust you won't see anything like it ever again. It still was very enjoyable for what it was worth, with all the randomness involved by pressing any buttons. Oftentimes it led to hilarity, Oh, who am I kidding? It was hilarious throughout, and the credits will want to entice you into playing it some more, because you might want to see where you'll find a shell with legs, or a couple bears dancing, or whatever the hell that is. But I assure you, there is no need to panic, huh? Oh, 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 well, that's what most people think of my content. The music was composed by K. Tani, a somewhat big name in his native land of Japan. And just like this game, it's all over the place in terms of its style. There's no rhyme or reason for the tracks as some of them play in multiple rooms, but it's nonetheless an impressive array of sounds. Like in one room it'd be a curious horn, the next could be whimsical, then after that foreboding, and after that lighthearted, then after that odd or experimental is the best way of saying it. Most of them fit into the room they're assigned to, and there are some banger orchestral tunes sprinkled in there too, so this is a soundtrack worth checking out. But I think more praise should go to the sound effects guy for giving us all the lovely I was this close to skipping this section, like this close, but I discovered a couple more additional things while doing further research. The obvious extras are the options where you can toggle around with your four save slots, kinda insane you can save that many files on this game, but what won't be obvious is the level select mode, but if you input the following sequence on the title screen, you can access this mode and choose whatever scene you want to go to. 
If you know what number correlates to what scene, that would be cool to see anything you missed, but let's see what 67 holds since that is the number of this episode. Oh god damn it. This is also one of the few games to use the Sega Mega Mouse, but I don't have the kind of cash to spend on what this mouse is going for. I could easily kill a rat with a hammer and then give it my Genesis controller and see where that takes me. No idea how well this game sold, but I bet it didn't get around seeing it goes for well into the hundreds these days. It did get a re-release on the PS2 in 2002, but only in Japan and hasn't seen any sort of re-release since, only making the title more obscure than it already is. Sega shifted focus to their next console, the Saturn, in 1995, leaving the Genesis and other add-ons, including the CD, to die and leave a rather complicated legacy, but it might have had competition too if Nintendo wanted to do business with Sony and their own CD peripheral. Instead, they went to Philips and gave birth to their most successful competitor, while the result of the Nintendo and Philips partnership, the CDI, birthed a handful of odd Nintendo titles all its own. Wonder which one I'll talk about in the future. So, what is my rate to play? You ever heard the term Dadaism? It's an art form that foregoes all logic and rationality, instead going for irrational nonsense on all fronts. And I couldn't think of a better way to describe this game, a work of Dadaism, and a very good one. I don't know what the fellas at SEGA, Office One, Wahaha Hampo, and Data East were smoking, but I'm wondering if I could have some cause they must have went on one hell of a trip. Panic is a simple game in terms of gameplay, but a complicated piece of software in terms of what it sets out to do. I don't know why it makes us laugh, I don't know why it shows us the things we see, but I've learned to accept it for what it is, a unique title that remarkably may have something for everyone. And hey, it isn't much different to the kind of stuff you'd find from living books. It doesn't have a whole lot of challenge or strategy to really make it a game. But who really cares? If you're having fun, that's all that matters. It's something you should experience more of, just like this game. To conclude, I give this game a play rate of... Gotta play. But that's only my opinion. If you have your own thoughts, leave a comment. If you like what you see, leave a like. If you think others would enjoy this, share it around the web. And if you want to see more, subscribe. Anyway, this has been Brian the Blue Game Reviews, PANIC, for the Sega CD. Brian here, want to quickly say thanks for watching this game review, as this and other content wouldn't be possible without you. I appreciate anyone and everyone who watches my videos from all across the world, but it alarms me that over 80% of viewers aren't subscribed to the channel. So I'd like to reiterate and ask you to subscribe as well as ringing the bell to stay notified. That way you can stay up to date with future content that'll appear on the Jacobians channel. Presently I put out new quick views and current calamities every month and my brother Alex has a brand new show all about wrestling games called Wrestlebound. You might want to stick around as we're only getting started. You can also find me on a couple of other channels. I run the Starfighters Arcade channel where we take a look at the history of our machines on the floor as well as show you our new arrivals, and on Millennial X where me, arcade buddies, and family get into shenanigans playing, hunting, and reviewing games. If you want to explore more content, these would be the first places to go. That's all the time I got, but be sure to click the icon now if you want to watch the previous or upcoming episodes of Game Reviews.
Thank you.